Hey there folks, Mr. G here with another educational video. This is a follow-up on our last one where we talked generally about leasing, buying, and renting that went into a specific example about the differences between leasing and buying a vehicle. Now we're going to take a look at housing and how renting and buying a house looks a little bit different. When you rent an apartment or a house, there's a monthly cost that's called the rent. Unlike buying a house, you won't own it at the end and there is no buyout option. When you rent a house, it's not just your rent that you're paying each month in terms of your housing costs. There's a couple of other things you also need to pay for. These include utilities like gas, water, hydroelectric, though sometimes these are included in your monthly cost in your rent. It depends. You also have to pay for rental insurance, so you still need to insure the property. This is not only for your own possessions, but also in, in the case that the house is destroyed for whatever reason. One thing you are not responsible for as a renter is the routine maintenance of the house or the building itself, as well as the replacement of appliances that have been provided by the renter. So if you live in an apartment that's furnished with a fridge and a stove and one of them breaks, you are not responsible for that. What is exactly covered under this varies from place to place. So make sure that you check in with whoever you're renting from to see what you are responsible for in terms of routine maintenance and what you are not responsible for in your agreement. If you buy a house and take out a mortgage, you also have a monthly cost in the form of a mortgage payment, though this mortgage payment is almost always going to be bigger than the rent if it's the same value of the building or the apartment. The difference, however, is at the end, you own the house or the apartment. So as you're paying off your mortgage, you're building up capital because now you're going to eventually own this house. However, because you own the house, you're responsible for a lot of things. You have to provide your own utilities, your own insurance, routine maintenance, replacement of appliances, property tax, as well as strata fees if you live in an apartment. These fees go towards maintaining the communal building and the space around it. You also need to be able to provide a down payment of at least 10% of the purchase price of the house. So if you're unable to make this down payment and deal with a larger monthly cost, maybe buying doesn't make sense. Let's look at an example that's based on some of the numbers that you would see in Vancouver to look at the pros and cons of renting versus buying a house. Shauna and Taylor want to live in an apartment in Vancouver and are debating whether they want to buy one or rent it. They are advised to keep monthly housing costs below 30% of their income, and they make approximately $156,000 per year when they combine their income, so about $13,000 per month. For the apartment that they want, they have two options. They can rent it for $2,200 per month, this includes utilities, as well as $30 per month for rental insurance. Alternatively, they can buy the apartment for $625,000, total cost including tax. They can get a mortgage for 5.85%, comp compounded semi-annually, amortized over 25 years. And they have these other monthly costs. Property taxes, strata fees, utilities, insurance, maintenance. And they have this much saved up for a down payment. The first question they have to ask themselves is do they have enough money for a 10% down payment? For their down payment, they have $63,000. The minimum down payment is 10% of the cost of the house. So we would do the cost of the house, $625,000, times 10% as a decimal, so 0 0.1. And as we can see, they just barely have enough. $63,000 is quite a lot of savings. And this is just barely enough to cover an apartment and not even a particularly expensive one for Vancouver. Many apartments are upwards of a million dollars, especially if you look downtown. The next question is whether they can afford to rent the apartment based on the monthly cost. And that takes into account how much is 30% of their monthly income. The cost to rent is going to be the rental amount, $2,200, plus the insurance of $30. So their total monthly cost for housing would be $2,230. 30% of their monthly income, here we would take their monthly income of $13,000 and multiply by 30%, 0 0.3. As we can see, they definitely have enough money to rent. They're pretty comfortable in terms of how much money they have per month to spend on housing. So this is definitely very viable. The last question is whether they can afford to buy the apartment based on monthly costs. To find the monthly amount for their mortgage, we would have to use the mortgage calculator. So this is the mortgage calculator we used last time. I've entered in the amount for their house, taken off the 63,000 they have saved up for down payment, and we get our loan amount here. I have put in the mortgage rate, 5.85%. All mortgages in Canada are compounded semi-annually. We're told that the amortization period was 25 years. We weren't told the term, but 
In this case, we can just assume that we want to see what it would be if the mortgage rate stayed the same over the whole amortization period. We're not really interested in the term in this case. And they're paying monthly. Once we enter all of that, we get our value of $3,545.76. Now you might be thinking, well, that's under the $3,900 they have, that's 30% of their income. But don't forget, when you have a mortgage, it's more than just your mortgage payment that you have to pay each month. If you look back, they have to pay property taxes, strata fees, utilities, insurance, and maintenance costs each month. If we factor those into our calculation, their monthly housing cost is actually much closer to $4,360, which is well over the amount they can afford to pay each month in housing costs. So it's really too expensive. So in this instance, they wouldn't be able to afford to pay for the house. It would be too much of their monthly income, and it would just be a bad idea. Unfortunately, this is oftentimes the case when you look for properties around Vancouver because housing prices are just so incredibly high. You need a very large down payment just to get the loan, and your monthly costs are almost double what it would be to rent. If we look back at our mortgage calculator, we can see part of the reason why. On a house that was worth $625,000 that we took a loan out for $562,000, if we look at our fully amortized period, we almost pay for the entire house over again in interest payments. So over this 25 years, we're actually paying for the house two times, which is a ton of money. As a young adult, you're more likely to be renting, but especially as you get a little bit older and look to own property, it's really important to consider what your monthly mortgage payments would be and not to forget about all of the other expenses that come with buying a house that don't come with renting it. That being said, when you rent a house, you are not gaining any amount of capital because you're just renting it. You don't own the property and you never will. So the money you pay here is not really an investment. It's not gonna grow and come back to you in some way. Whereas when you buy a house, if the housing prices increase, you're making back your investment here. There's no simple answer about whether you should rent or buy. There are advantages and disadvantages to both, just like with leasing and buying. What's important is that you understand the different factors and the different advantages and disadvantages so that you can decide based on your situation which one makes the most sense. That's the end of the video here. Make sure you check out the weekly assignment as well as some practice questions from the book as well as a separate set of questions that I included for the week and I'll see you all in the next video.